Hi, I'm Emily and I'm going to take you through a tutorial on how to draw hair. We are going to move through it quite quickly, but I'm going to follow four basic steps. We'll start with simple shapes and then we'll look at flow lines or the movement of the hair and then we'll go into shading and then we'll bring in some detail and some texture to make it look realistic. If you're interested in drawing hair but you haven't done it before, then you might be feeling a little bit nervous or not sure where to start and this process should make it really easy. I'd recommend drawing along with me and um, just grab a pencil, an eraser, you can grab yourself something like a, a q-tip or a cotton bud or even a, a tissue if you want to do a little bit of blending but you don't need it. First thing we're going to do is look for the shape of the hair and I've already mapped out the face here just so I've got something to build the hair around. I've drawn quite dark but I want you to draw really lightly because when we put in this first shape, these first outlines, we want them to disappear later on. So draw really lightly. I'll draw a little bit darker so you can see. So you're looking for the main shape of the entire hair. And it doesn't have to be perfect. And you can actually edit this a little bit and you know decide if you want certain curls in there or if you want to leave some of them out. I'll do this very lightly first. You might not be able to see it very clearly, but then I'll come back in and go over it a bit darker. It's almost like we're cutting out a silhouette of the shape of the hair and drawing that in. If you're working from a photograph like I am, then you'll be flicking your eye back and forth all the time. Let me go over that a little bit darker so that you can see it. Now remember to keep your lines light because if you have this outline showing up at the end, it's going to look kind of like a you know some sort of weird helmet on her head and we don't want that. So these lines should disappear, it's really to, just to find some structure. The next thing to do is to find the shape of the sections of the hair. So if you have a look at a photograph or have a look in the mirror and you've got long hair, you'll notice that um, the individual strands will clump together into bigger sections or bigger shapes and that's what we're looking for. It's easy to get overwhelmed with uh, you know, how much there is to draw because we know that the hair is made up of thousands and thousands of individual strands of hair and we just can't possibly draw all of those partly because we can't see them um, and also just because it would take so much time so instead of thinking about individual hairs we're looking for the shapes that those hair hairs make, make when they clump together And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You could be doing this from imagination as well. So if there's parts that you can't quite see clearly or you don't want to include, then you don't have to, you can leave them out. But we're looking for the main shapes. And I hope you're drawing along with me. If you're not, go grab a pencil. Even if you're just doing this as a, a test to see how it goes, and then you can find a photograph that you want to work from a little bit more seriously. I'm looking for all of the shapes I can see. There's a big dark shape in there and a big dark shape here that I've picked out and then I've also picked out some of these these curls of hair. This is quite a strong one coming through here. It has other shapes or lines inside it but we're just looking for the main shape again i'm drawing really dark you can see what i'm doing take your time especially if you're working from a photograph to try and find those shapes that you can see the biggest shapes 
Next thing we're going to do is we're going to show the direction of the hair, the flow of the hair by adding some, just some fairly light lines, light loose lines. So we're looking for kind of like a flicking action. You start with your pencil on the paper and then as you flick it away from you or even towards you, you bring it off the paper and you should get that nice smooth curve and a nice fine end to it. And we're going to bring those lines in following the direction of the hair. We don't really need the photograph now, we could just kind of work with what we've got. I'll just do a little bit of a close-up here so you can see what I'm doing. This is not exactly the same as what I've drawn here, but just to give you an idea of maybe these three sections that overlay each other. And you're going to follow the direction of the hair, adding in those flicking marks. Maybe just a couple of lines, two or three. Keep these light because these are going to disappear as well. It's just for us to figure out the direction that the hair is going in or the direction that it's um, you know, curling up, or uh, maybe it's got a wave in it like this little part here. You can draw some at the top of the head as well, coming up and over. And even at this stage now, we've got something that looks like it's flowing wavy here it's quite illustrative, meaning that um, it's using lines and outlines, but that might be something that you're interested in. Don't do too many, we're going to bring in some more later on in a couple of steps. The next step is to add in some basic shading. And if all of this is quite light in your drawing, then some of your lines might disappear and that's okay. If you have a look for the very lightest parts, anywhere where the light is hitting, and if we're using the photograph, then it's maybe this area here, down over the shoulder. I might add in one or two more curls in here. And um, maybe this curl over here has got the light hitting it as well. If you're working from imagination, then you just think about the direction the, 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 direction the light is coming from. Maybe it's coming from the front and the parts that would be catching the light and the parts that wouldn't be catching the light would be these darker parts here. Anything that's underneath something else or curved under, the light wouldn't really be getting in here. So those are the parts we're going to be shading in, the parts where the light isn't re reaching. We're trying to keep some light areas for the highlights and I find it easiest to start with the darkest parts, shade those in and I'm just really loosely blocking this in using the side of my pencil to be able to shade uh, quite fast and loosely. This is really the ugly stage of the drawing. It's going to look a bit kind of messy and um, maybe not as detailed or realistic as you want but drawing is all about process and we need to um, keep that in mind and try to stick to the process if we want a good result. I'm not even following the direction of the hair really because I'm using quite a soft mark making sure there's not too many lines in there but um, it doesn't really matter if you're going against the direction of the hair just blocking in everything that's not going to be light or a highlight Maybe some parts of this curl here. If I think about where the light might be hitting, it might be hitting this part that curves out. And just under here might be a little bit darker. I'm not using the photograph so much now. And probably, well, and glancing at it now and again. Probably in here and maybe a little bit in here. Maybe under here too. 
So even with just some basic shading like this, we get a bit of depth in here. We have light areas, we have dark areas, and we have middle areas, and that's what we need to get something to look three-dimensional. I'm just going to rub out a little bit of my outlines because I did them quite dark. If you keep yours light, then they probably disappeared underneath your shading and your mark making. I don't want this to look like a cutout. I want it to look more realistic than that. Okay, next step, not too far away from finishing. This is the main step, this one. We're going to add um, texture of the hair, and this is where we're trying to show that there's individual strands. But again, we can't draw the individual strands, so instead we can create a type of a pattern that creates the illusion that there's strands of hair there. We've already found the direction of the hair, and now we're going to go in and use that flicking motion again, but a um, little bit more carefully and treating um, them as a pattern. So working over and over again, starting at one point, flicking upwards. And if I keep flicking from this bottom part here, I'll get a darker part of the pattern and it'll fade to a lighter part of the pattern. We're going to add that in each of the sections. If you're working from imagination, then think about the parts that are darkest and start from those areas. So this curl here comes out from underneath this one. This one's going to be lighter. So I can start this dark part underneath and flicking to follow the direction of the hair. And then maybe it's going to be dark down here as well. So you want to, and maybe a little bit to the side, but you want to keep some of the highlights, some of the lightest area. Don't just draw strands all over it because where the light is hitting, you're not going to be able to see a lot of the detail. And then I'm just going to go over that again and add in some darker flicking marks, trying to follow the same direction, and it might take a little bit of practice. You might need to work on a spare bit of paper. And then this one under here is going to be dark at this point where it emerges from underneath that one above it following the direction of the hair. You can change the pressure of your pencil too, so you might have some lighter ones as you come forward into that lighter area. And then this one here is still going to have a bit of dark, maybe it's coming up from you know the top of the head. Might be a little bit darker in here. So by adding that pattern you start to get the sense that there are lots of individual strands there without having to draw them all. And um, you can also bring a bit of shading over the top as well. If you look at a photograph you might see some really long thin shapes like this and you could bring those in too, just to add a little bit more variety so it's not all thick. These are like mini clumps of hair within the larger clump of hair. I'm going to go ahead and pull all of that in. It's going to take a little while, see how we go. I might speed up the video a little bit, uh, but take your time with this part. Thinking about each section individually, and you've already got the movement lines in there for most of these sections, so follow the direction of those flow lines, those movement lines that you've already put in. You're always starting those flicking marks from the darkest parts. Don't forget about the top of the head that can use that same flicking mark coming slightly up and over. And 
this pencil, it's a 4B pencil, but it's actually quite light. I'm definitely going to need some darker areas, so you want to bring in some black areas somewhere. Even if you're doing blonde here, I'd bring in just a little bit of black at some point. It might be just around the face here. Bring in those dark areas. And use a darker pencil. Let's have a look. I think it will have to be this one. This one might be a little bit too dark. We'll see. A little bit too blunt is what I mean. That's no, okay. So as soon as I bring these darker points in, I've got more depth. And you're just going to bring those in over top of where you've already put your darkest parts. Might need to tidy up a few edges where those flicking motions, um, those flicking marks start. So you see I've got this jagged edge here, I can just tidy that up a little bit. We can also think about the foreground of the hair or the parts that are closest to us being more detailed and these parts at the back as being less detailed. We don't need to worry too much about those and they can stay pretty, um, pretty plain, maybe just with a little bit of shading in them. You can use your dark pencil with light pressure too if you need a lighter mark. So to get this part looking like it's curling over, you know, really dark underneath and then still using my pattern but with less pressure. And then I'm just going to bring in all of this dark part in here. There's some shading, you can't see much in terms of detail. can add some detail over top or you could you know add your detail and then shade over top if it's not dark enough just about there there's a couple more things I will show you and then I'll let you just finish up on your own if you want to do any more You got your blending tool here, or if you do have one, then you might want to smooth out some of these parts. You might feel like oh, you got too much texture in one part, and so you can smooth it out a little bit. And the other thing, which is kind of what we're doing here anyway, is if it's dark here, then you might need to go back over and add another layer of shading, even in your light areas. So this here area here is a light area, but if I want to take it back to like a, a um, brunette or even black here, then I can shade everything in, all these light areas in, just with a light layer of shading. I still want to have light and dark areas, but all my light areas are going to be more like a light brown rather than, um, you know, a white or a blonde. I've got a little bit more work to do here, but the last thing that you can do, uh, once you're happy with the amount of shading that you've got, you're happy with 
the textures on the hair and getting that sense of flow and um, depth. That's what we're using this texture for, is to create some depth in the hair. And then you could add just like a few sort of flyaways. There's a few around the front of the face here. Maybe um, something sort of coming off the, the back a little bit. And maybe a few coming off some of these curls. Just single strands using that flicking motion again. And it's going to give it a little bit of a natural look. Don't want to overdo it, but just here and there. If you have any of those out outlines from when we first put those shapes on, there's a few here, then um, you could just rub those out as well. So it doesn't look too blocky or outlined. And that was a very quick run through of how to draw hair. If you are doing a more serious portrait, then you'd spend a lot of time on this. You're starting to get the depth here now just with this really quick one, and I'm going to do a little bit more work on it. And um, you could work on yours some more if you want to, or you could go find a photograph and try and apply this on your own. I hope it's been really useful. Now just one other thing, there are a few shadows in the hair and they're quite important to make the hair look like it's coming up and over out of the, the center line, the parting. So there's a bit of a shadow there and then there's a little bit of a shadow on the other side and then there's a bit of a highlight that you can leave where the, the light was hitting. One more thing, if you need to, you can use your eraser as a drawing tool as well. So I made all of this quite dark because I was showing you how to do brunette here, but if you did want to make it blonde here, then you could choose those highlight areas and if you've got a putty eraser, uh, just bring those highlight areas back again if you're wanting the hair to look a little bit lighter, have more contrast. And that is it. I think I have in my pocket, which is a little bit weird, a blending tool. Put it in there earlier because I knew I was doing this tutorial. 